In this lesson, we will explore some of the tools in the toolbox. I'll demonstrate on a blank 8x10 canvas. We already know what the brush tool can do, so we'll skip that one. Beside the brush tool are the shape tools. These have a dual purpose. First, they can be used to draw straight lines, curves, and geometric shapes with the brush tool. And second, they can be used to draw vector shapes. Vector art is its own in-depth subject, and we'll be focusing more on creating roster art in this course, so I will only give an overview of what you can do with the vector tools in Krita. I have a reference video you can watch if you want to learn more about creating vector art. The line tool will enable you to draw straight lines with whatever brush is currently selected. Tap and drag to create the start and end points. Hold still and you'll see a preview of the line. Release to draw the line. Holding shift will constrain the lines to 15 degree angles. You can also draw a line, but before releasing, hold alt to drag the line to a new location. Another way to access the straight line mode is to select the brush tool, then hold V. Here's a pro tip. If you're using Windows 10 or 11, you can download and install Microsoft Power Toys, which is a free application that can add some art and design related functions to your computer. The feature I want to focus on is the crosshairs under mouse utilities. These are independent of the crosshairs you get inside Krita. These work in any application and can be enabled and disabled with a keyboard shortcut. Mine is set to Control alt shift x I have a reference video you can watch if you want to learn more. As you can see, by enabling these, I can use the crosshairs to align the points of my lines more easily. Now I can avoid overdrawing the line. When I am done with them, I can hide the Windows crosshairs with the same shortcut. I have this shortcut programmed to a button on my Stream Deck, but you can also set it to an express key. The straight line mode also works with other brush tools, including the erasers and blenders. I'll explain how it works with vector layers later. Each tool has a set of properties you can access from the tool options panel. I have mine docked on the left. For the straight line brush, I can choose to show or hide the line preview among other settings. Most of the time, if you're using a tool, you'll want to have this panel open as well. In addition to drawing straight lines, you can also draw rectangles and ellipses. You can even choose to fill these shapes with a color. By choosing foreground color, the fill and stroke will be the same color. Background color is the swatch here in the color selector. You can use this to choose a different color from the stroke. You can juxtapose these colors as well. You can also draw freeform polygonal shapes using the polygon and polyline tools. The polygon tool creates closed shapes, while the polyline tool creates open shapes. Holding shift and clicking will close the shape or end the line. The Bezier curve tool works well for drawing curved lines, but you'd be better off using a vector layer for this since you'd be able to edit the curves after drawing them. If you try this tool, you'll see that it can be cumbersome to work with. You have to drag out the curves at each point. If you'd like to draw these shapes freehand, with a bit of assistance to make the lines smoother straight, you can use the freehand path tool. Right now it's set to curve, so I can draw curved lines that get smoothed out. If I set it to straight, then I get lines that are automatically straightened. You can set the tolerance of this smoothing as well using the optimize value. For a bit more control over line smoothing, you can use the dynamic brush tool. This has mass and drag properties that can greatly slow down your brush, making it easier to draw accurately. Smoothing or brush stabilization can be applied to the regular freehand brush tools as well. Basic smoothing adds a small amount of smoothing to reduce wobble in your lines without slowing them down too much. This is necessary if you're using an older drawing tablet or a cheap brand that doesn't have very good pen technology. If you're not having any stability issues, then you can leave smoothing disabled. If you want a higher amount of smoothing, then choose a weighted or stabilizer. Higher values will stabilize your stroke more. In particular, the stabilizer mode really keeps your line from wobbling, even if you have a very shaky hand or you're using a mouse to draw. You can fine tune these settings to get the exact degree of stabilization you need. The downside to all this precision is that a stable brush makes it very difficult to draw fast and loosely. So unless you need a very stable line for inking or something of that nature, leave this setting very low or even disabled. Since you cannot save smoothing settings per brush, it can be inconvenient to have to keep turning it on and off. 
What might be easier is to make a custom keyboard shortcut to enable and disable it, and maybe even program that to an express key. The final tool in this row is the multi brush tool. This allows you to paint with symmetry. As you can see, my line is mirrored and I can create a nice mandala effect. I can edit the number of symmetry planes, known as brushes, and even use different modes to get various effects. The next row down contains the move and transformation tools. To really explore what these can do, we need to have something on a couple of different layers. You can click on the plus button in the layers panel to create a new default layer and draw something on both layers, or you can use my transform tool template to follow along with me. Let's start with the move tool. You might get this confused with the arrow shaped tool near the top called the select shapes tool. But if you try to use that, Krita will let you know it's intended for vector shapes. Whichever layer is currently selected will be moved by the move tool. I'll select the red ball layer, and I can drag that layer around the canvas. I can even select multiple layers by holding shift or control and move them together. I can also constrain the movement of a layer to a horizontal or vertical axis by holding shift. A quick way to select this tool is to press T. To the left in the toolbox is the transform tool. This tool allows you to move objects around the canvas as well, but it can also enlarge, reduce, rotate, and distort layers. But we'll come back to that in a later lesson. I'll select the black ball layer and move, then enlarge it by dragging the outer edges of the box or the corners. When I am finished, I can end the transformation in a couple of ways. First, I can select a different tool like one of the brushes. And second, I can press enter on my keyboard. Pressing escape will reset the transformation while keeping it active, sort of like an undo. You can also press control T to activate the transform tool. Multiple layers can be transformed as well. Now that we know how to move layers around and transform them, we can go back to the shape tools and briefly examine how they can be used to draw in vector. I'll return to the blank 8x10 canvas. You'll need to click the arrow next to the plus button in the layers panel to create a new vector layer to let Krita know that you want to use these tools for vector illustration. Now if I use any of the shape tools, I will get a vector line instead of a brush stroke. I can use the select shapes tool to move the shapes and transform them like I can with the default layer. The advantage is that I can also use the Edit Shapes tool to freely edit the shape of these lines. For example, I can round the edges of this square by dragging the corner. And in the tool options, if I choose Convert to Path, I'll get nodes that I can use to reshape this more precisely. You can also easily edit the stroke and fill colors of vector shapes in the tool options panel. You can even fill shapes with gradients. If I reshape the vector layer, the fill adjusts automatically. But perhaps the greatest advantage is that vector art is resolution independent, so it can be enlarged without losing visual quality. To remove vector shapes, select them with the Select Shapes tool, and then press Delete or delete the entire layer. Again, to keep this course concise, I won't say much more about vector art. Let's explore the Text tool next. Text is another type of vector shape you can create in Krita. Though you can add it to default layers, it's better to do it in vector so you don't lose visual quality when scaling the font up and down. Drag a box where you'd like to place the text. The Edit Text panel appears, and you can use it to enter your desired text and choose its properties like font size and color. You can resize this panel to make it smaller, but unfortunately you have to close it to do anything with a text layer. This is very inconvenient, so I would recommend using a different application for your text if you use it a lot. You can always make the artwork in Krita and then the text in something else using a cross-compatible file format like PSD. Next we will go back down to the Crop tool which can crop or enlarge the canvas. I'll load the canvas size template to work with. The Crop tool is most commonly used to make the canvas smaller by trimming off excess space. So if I want to trim this canvas down, I'll drag a box where I want to remove the canvas. When you're cropping by eye, you're creating an arbitrary crop. If you're just posting your artwork to the web, the crop dimensions are not so important. But if you'll be printing your work, I'd recommend cropping to a specific print size. You can set a specific crop size in the tool options. You can also lock and edit the aspect ratio. For example, a setting of 1 will make the crop perfectly square. I'm going to press enter to commit that crop, and now that outside area has been trimmed away. This part of the painting will be permanently removed if I save my artwork. If I want the cropped area to return, I can undo to the point before I had applied the crop. 
I'll switch to a blank 8x10 canvas, and next is the gradient tool, which allows you to create a gradient by dragging it across the canvas. The gradient will flow between the start and end points. You can also choose gradient presets from the properties bar. There is a foreground color to transparent gradient, as well as many other color combinations. You can even change the gradient shape from linear to radial and many other modes. The sample tool we already explored in an earlier lesson, we can use this to sample colors from the canvas. There's more that this tool can do, but we'll get into that in a dedicated lesson. Next is the paint bucket tool. The paint bucket tool can flood fill areas of your canvas. Let's open the paint bucket tool template for this. The crop tool is most commonly used to make the canvas smaller by trimming off excess space, hard edge brush. This tool has a lot of properties, so let's expand the panel to show them all. I'll also reset the settings so they are all at their defaults. Basically, the paint bucket detects differences in color and uses those differences to limit the color fill to a specific boundary. With these settings here, I can select the circle lines layer and fill those shapes. You may notice that when you try to fill the top right circle, the paint floods outside of the shape. That's because that circle is not closed like the other shapes, so the paint has a way to escape its boundary. I'll undo those fills by reverting my template. You can do this by simply reopening the file. One key feature to be aware of is the reference setting. The second option will allow the paint bucket to detect differences in color on all layers. So if I select the color fill layer and fill there, the fill is separate from the line work. By growing the edge of the fill by two pixels, I can even get it to fill beyond the edge of the line art. This makes for a clean, more professional coloring job. The drag fill mode will even allow you to drag across cells to fill them in. This can greatly speed up your coloring workflow. The enclose and fill tool is another more advanced way to fill line art. I'll reset the settings and revert the template. You can choose from a variety of ways to make a selection, including shapes, a lasso, or a brush. I'll choose the lasso. Next, you can define exactly what should be filled in. In this case, I'll set the target regions to any surrounded by a specific color, and choose black since that's what we want to use as the fill boundary. I'll also grow the fill by two pixels, set the reference to all layers, and fill onto the color fill layer. Now if I draw a selection around the star shape, you can see it's filled in perfectly. But the real advantage of this tool is that I can undo and then draw a selection around the star and the circle to fill everything at once. This is very time-saving if you have a lot of small cells to fill in. If you prefer, you can also use the brush mode to paint over what you want to fill. There is a lot more you can do to fine-tune this tool, but it's too much to cover in this course. The techniques for coloring line art are something I cover in a reference video, so I will refer you to that if you would like to learn more. I also have a reference video that covers coloring specifically with the Colorize Mask tool in Krita, so I won't repeat that information here. That concludes our exploration of the toolbox. There are a few other tools we skipped over, like the selection tools, assistant, and reference image tools. We will come back to these in a later lesson. Tools such as the measure, smart patch, and calligraphy I don't find to be essential. Coming up next, we will be exploring the menu bar commands like file, edit, etc.